Hi, welcome all Chayalim to the Mitzvah Maven, Mitzvah Shiurim, learning the 613 Mitzvahs from the Sararor Yahadah's curriculum. And this year, we're going to Be'ezer Sashem learn the Mitzvahs in Book 5, the Mitzvahs being learned by the Chayalim in Grade 8. Unit 209, page 12. This page has one Mitzvah, and it is a Mitzvah Saseh, a Mitzvah that tells us what we have to do. This Mitzvah is Mitzvah Saseh Yasdin bin Lekeach Umeicher, the mitzvah to educate between a seller and a buyer. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, V'chisim kiru mimkar la'amisecha, o'yika noy miyad amisecha. The synopsis of this mitzvah is Bezdin should judge disputed purchases. The Torah tells us that when buying and selling, there are certain rules and laws of when a sale is considered valid and when it is not valid. It is possible that a buyer and seller will disagree about whether or not a sale is valid. This mitzvah tells us that if a buyer and seller disagree and they come to Bezdin, the Jewish court, then Bezdin is obligated to judge the case according to the rules of the Torah, which tell us when a sale is valid and when a sale is not valid. This mitzvah applies to Bezdin, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Unit 210, page 22. This page has two mitzvahs. And they are both mitzvahs loisase, mitzvahs that tell us what we are not allowed to do. The first mitzvah is shaleilo haynes be mikach umimkar, not to cheat in regards to buying and selling. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk, v'chisim karu mimkar la misecha, oikar noy miyad misecha, al taynu ish es achiv. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not cheat another person when buying or selling. This mitzvah tells us that when buying and selling, the seller is not allowed to cheat the buyer by charging him more money than the true value of the item. And the buyer is not allowed to cheat the seller by paying less than the true value of the item. For example, if a seller is selling a watch which costs $10, he's not allowed to charge the buyer $15, charging him $5 more than the true value of the watch. The same thing works the other way around. If someone is buying a watch that really costs $10, he's not allowed to pay for the watch only $5, thereby paying $5 less than the true value of the watch. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yiddish Aver violates this mitzvah, there is no punishment. The second mitzvah is Shalei Lohayne Sager B'Mameh not to cheat a convert in money matters. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not cheat a ger in money matters. This mitzvah is telling us about a ger. A ger is a guy who becomes a yid. Now a ger, once he becomes a yid, all the mitzvahs that apply to regular yidin apply to him as well. For example, in the previous mitzvah, we learned that we are not allowed to cheat a yid when buying or selling. This applies equally to a ger, that we are not allowed to cheat a ger when buying or selling. However, Hashem tells us that we have to be extra careful with a ger, and therefore Hashem gives us another mitzvah specifically about a ger, that we are not allowed to cheat a ger when buying or selling. This mitzvah tells us that when buying or selling from a ger, or se- when buying from a ger or selling to a ger, we are not allowed to cheat a ger. If a yid does cheat a ger, he would be over this mitzvah in addition to the previous mitzvah that tells us we are not allowed to cheat a regular yid. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a yid is over violates this mitzvah, there is no punishment. Unit 211, page 30. This page has two mitzvahs, and they are both mitzvahs loisase, mitzvahs that tell us what we are not allowed to do. The first mitzvah is shaloi lahaynes echad mi Yisrael bidvarim, not to hurt any Jew through words. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, v'loisaynu ish esamisay v'yareysa me'alekecha. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not hurt a Jew with words. This mitzvah tells us that we are not allowed to hurt any yid through words. This could be hurting another yid's feelings by telling him something that makes him feel uncomfortable. This could be embarrassing another yid through telling him something that he's embarrassed of, or anything 
that makes another Yid uncomfortable or hurt through the words that we say. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yid is over, violates this mitzvah, there is no punishment. The second mitzvah is hager bidvarim, not to hurt a ger through words. The mucker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk v'ger loisayna. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not hurt a ger with words. Earlier in the previous unit, we learned about not cheating another yid with money. There we learned that a ger, meaning a goy who became a yid is included amongst all other Yidin, and we are not allowed to cheat him with money either, just like another Yid. However, we learned that in addition, there is a separate mitzvah that tells us specifically that we are not allowed to cheat a Ger with money. This is because Hashem wants us to be extra careful in our behavior towards a Ger. In this unit, where we are learning about not hurting another Yid through words, we also have the same concept. Here too, a Ger is included with all other Yidin, and we are not allowed to hurt a Ger with words, just like we are not allowed to hurt any other Yid through words. Over here too, however, we have another mitzvah that tells us specifically about a Ger, that we are not allowed to hurt a Ger with words. This is because Hashem wants us to be extra careful with our behavior and our relationship to a Ger, so He gave us another mitzvah that tells us we are not allowed to hurt a Ger with words. And that is this mitzvah that we are learning now. This mitzvah tells us that we are not allowed to hurt a Ger with words. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies in all times. If a Yid is over, violates this mitzvah, there is no punishment. We are now going to skip to unit 216. This is because units 212, 213, 214, and 215 do not have any mitzvahs in them. Rather, they are all different types of halachas that a Yid is obligated to fulfill and to know, However, they are not part of the 613 mitzvahs of the Torah. Unit 216, page 66. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah din eved ivri, the laws of an eved ivri. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, ki sikna eved ivri shei shanam yavid uvashaviz yeitze lachav shichinam. The synopsis of this mitzvah is follow all the laws of the Torah regarding an Eved Ivri. An Eved Ivri means a Jewish slave. A Jewish slave refers to a Yid who was either sold by Beisdin to another Yid to be his slave, or it was a Yid who was so poor that he had no money or property whatsoever to live from that the Torah allows him to sell himself to another Yid to be his slave and to live from the money that he gets from the sale of himself. This is called an Eved Ivri, a Jewish slave. This mitzvah tells us that the master, the Yid, who buys this Eved Ivri, has to follow all the halachas in the Torah in how he is to relate and to be, deal and behave with the Eved Ivri. This mitzvah applies to men, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevel is observed. Page 67. This page has four mitzvahs, and they're all mitzvahs loisase. The first mitzvah, by number 505 on the page, is Shaloi Nimkar Eved Ivri Al Evan Hamikach. Do not sell an Eved Ivri in the manner that servants are usually sold. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is in the words in the Pasuk. You can find those words in the mitzvah box on top of the Hebrew and English name of this mitzvah. The words are Loi Machru Mimkeres Oved. This mitzvah tells us that an Eved Ivri is not allowed to be sold in the way that servants and slaves are usually sold. Back in the day when there used to be slaves, slaves were sold at an auction in a public marketplace by putting him on an auction block, meaning they would set up a block or a stage in the marketplace and they would present the slave at this auction block to everyone to, for everyone to see and the person who was selling the slave would start an auction, meaning people would bid the price that they're willing to pay for the slave, and whoever bid the highest amount of money would buy the slave. This, as you can imagine, is very disrespectful and undignified and degrading and embarrassing for the slave. The Torah does not allow us to sell an Eved Ivri, a Jewish slave, in any of the ways that a non-Jewish slave or regular servant is usually sold. Rather, an Eved Ivri has to be sold in a quiet, dignified, and respectful way. This mitzvah, 
applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. If a Yiddish Eiver violates this mitzvah, there is no punishment. The second mitzvah, by number 506 on the page, is Shaloi Lavid Be'evid Ivri Ba'avoidas Perech. Do not make an Evid Ivri do unnecessary or limitless work. The Makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, which again are on top of the Hebrew and English name in the mitzvah box on the page. The words are Leisir De Vay Beforech. This mitzvah tells us that we are not allowed to make an Evid Ivri do Avoidas Perech. What is Avoidas Perech? In this context, Avoidas Perech means unnecessary or limitless work meaning work that is no, there's no purpose for it, there's no need for it, or work that has no end to it. For example, a master, a, Jewish, a, a master of a Jewish slave, a master of an Evid Ivri, is not allowed to tell his Evid Ivri that he should dig a pit in his field if the master has no use for the pit, and he's just telling the Evid to do work for no purpose, just to keep him busy. Another example would be if a master tells his slave to rake in his garden, and he says, rake in the garden until I come back. And he doesn't give the slave a set time when to stop, or a set point in the garden that you should rake until this point. Rather, the servant is doing work without knowing when is there going to be an end to this work. These are examples of avodas perech, and we are not allowed to make an Evid Ivri do avodas perech. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. If a Yiddish Eiver violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. The third mitzvah, by number 507 on the page, is Shaloi Lavid Be'evid Ivri Avidas Evid. Do not make an Evid Ivri perform demeaning tasks usually done by a servant. The Makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, Again, you can find the words of the Pasuk in the mitzvah box on top of the Hebrew and English name of this mitzvah. The words are, Leisavit boy avoidas avid. This mitzvah tells us that we're not allowed to make an Evid Ivri do degrading and embarrassing tasks, jobs that are usually done by non-Jewish servants. This mitzvah is telling us that we're not allowed to make an Evid Ivri do something which is humiliating and is usually done by a non-Jewish servant. For example, we're not allowed to ask our Evid Ivri to take off our shoes or carry the, our clothes behind us to the bathhouse because this is something that is usually only done by servants. Rather, a master is only allowed to ask his Evid Ivri to do work that would usually be done by a hired worker, a worker who is being paid for his work. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Gabel is observed. If a Yiddish Eiver violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. The fourth mitzvah, by number 508 on the page, is Do not allow a Ger Teshav to make an Evid Ivri do unnecessary or limitless work. The Makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, and again, you can find the words of the Pasuk in the mitzvah box on top of the Hebrew and English name of this mitzvah, the words are la yerdenu beferech leinecha. There were times that the Yidin had authority over the non-Jews living amongst them. During such times, in order for a non-Jew to be allowed to remain in Eretz Yisrael, he had to accept upon himself the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach, the seven mitzvahs that all Goyim are responsible and obligated to keep. A non-Jew who did so was called a Ger Teshav a non-Jew who was allowed to live amongst the Yidin. During those times, if a Yid would see a Ger Teshav giving his Evid Ivri, meaning a Yid who was sold to a Ger Teshav, if the Yid would see this Ger Teshav giving his Evid Ivri useless, unnecessary or limitless tasks, jobs, the Yid would not be allowed to ignore it. He would be obligated to stop the Ger Teshav from continuing to treat his Evid Ivri in that manner. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. If a Yid violates his Eividus mitzvah, he is punished with Malkos. Page 68. This page has two mitzvahs. The first mitzvah is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah Hanek Evid Ivri. 
to give gifts to an Evid Ivri when he goes out to freedom. The Mokar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, Ha'anek ta'anek lo'i mitzayincha o migarnecha o miyikvecha asher birachacha Hashem alikecha titan lo'i. The synopsis of this mitzvah is give gifts to an Evid Ivri when he goes out to freedom. This mitzvah tells us that a master of an Evid Ivri is obligated to give the Evid Ivri gifts when the Evid Ivri goes out free. This mitzvah has many different halachas regarding in what circumstances the Evid Ivri gets those gifts and what type of gifts the master has to give. This mitzvah includes that a master has to give gifts to an Amaha Ivriya, a Jewish maidservant, which we'll learn about in the next unit. He has to give an Amaha Ivriya gifts when she goes free, just like he has to give gifts to an Evid Ivri when he goes free. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. The second mitzvah is a mitzvah sloisase. This mitzvah is shaloy l'shaleach evet ivri reikam kishayetze chavshi. Not to send an evet ivri empty-handed when he goes free. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, loyse shalachenu reikam. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not let an Evid Ivri leave you empty-handed. This mitzvah tells us that the master of an Evid Ivri or of an Amah Ha'ivriya is not allowed to let his Evid Ivri or Amah Ha'ivriya go free without giving them gifts. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. If a Yiddish Ever violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. Unit 217, page 80. This page has two mitzvahs. Now, they might look like one mitzvah because there's only one mitzvah box on the page. However, as you can see on the left column of the mitzvah box, there are two numbers in two rows. One row says 511, and the second row says 512. This is because there are two separate mitzvahs. They are only joined in one mitzvah box in the book, but really there are two separate mitzvahs. These two mitzvahs are both mitzvahs ase. The first mitzvah, by number 511, is mitzvah yiud shal ama ivriya. Marry the Jewish maidservant. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk. You could find the words of this Pasuk in the box on top of the name of the mitzvah. You could find it by the number 511 in the middle of the Pasuk. The words are asher lo yada. This mitzvah is telling us about an ama ha ivriya. An ama ha ivriya is a girl, a Jewish girl, who is younger than 12 years old, who her father sold to another Yid because the father was so poor and he had no money or possessions whatsoever to live from that the Torah allows him to sell his girl who is under 12 years old to be a maidservant in another Yid's house. And the father lives off the money that he got from the sale. This mitzvah is telling us that once the master buys the Amah Avriah, he is obligated to marry her as his wife. If he doesn't want to marry her, then his son is obligated to marry her, and that is included in this mitzvah. In other words, this mitzvah tells us that either the master or his son must marry the Amah Ivriya. This is obviously if the girl wants to marry the master or marry his son. This mitzvah applies to all people. It applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. The second mitzvah, by number 512 on the page, is mitzvah's pidyen amaha ivriya. Redeem a Jewish maidservant in one of the ways enumerated in the Torah. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, which again, you could find them in the box on top of the mitzvah for the mitzvah name of 511, in the Pasuk by the number 512, the word is vehefta. This mitzvah tells us that if the master or his son do not marry the Amah then the master is obligated to help the girl redeem herself. What does this mean? This means that if the girl worked some time by the master and then she got money, enough money to buy herself back, so to speak, from the master for giving, by giving him the value of the remaining years that she is supposed to work, then the master is obligated to take that money from the girl and allow her to go free. 
he's also uh, obligated to take the money and not say, I want you to pay me more money than the money that he originally paid. This mitzvah applies to all people. It applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. Page 81. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah shaloi sa'aseh. This mitzvah is shaloi yimker ama ha'ivriya, not to sell a Jewish maidservant. The makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, la yimsher lemachra v'vigdeva. The synopsis of this mitzvah is to not sell the Jewish maidservant to anyone else. This mitzvah tells us that the master who bought the Amah HaYivriah is not allowed to sell her or give her away as a gift to anyone else. If he does sell her or give her away as a gift, the sale or the gift is not considered valid and she is still his maidservant and he is still obligated to support her. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies during the time when Yevil is observed. If a Yiddis Eivir violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. Unit 218, page 88. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah saveida be'evit kenani le'olam. The mitzvah to have your Canaanite servant work forever. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, lo'olam bahem ta'avoidu. The synopsis of this mitzvah is keep your Canaanite servant forever. This mitzvah is telling us about an Evet Kenani. An Evet Kenani is a certain type of non-Jewish servant. Included in this category is also a Shivcha Kenanis, a non-Jewish maidservant. This mitzvah tells us that we're obligated to keep our non-Jewish Evet Kenani or Shivcha Kenanis, we're obligated to keep them as our slaves forever not letting them go free. This mitzvah has some exceptions where the Torah tells us clearly that the Evet Kanani or Shivcha Kananis do go free. However, in general, a Yid is obligated to keep his Evet Kanani or Shivcha Kananis as a, yid, as a slave forever. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Unit 219, page 96. This page has two mitzvahs. And they are both mitzvah shaloi sa'aseh. The first mitzvah is shaloi lahachzer edet shabarach me'adeinav michutz ala'aretz l'aretz Yisrael. Not to return a servant who escaped from his master outside of Eretz Yisrael to Eretz Yisrael. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, loisaskir eved aladeinav. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not return a slave to slavery if he ran away to Eretz Yisrael from his master who was in another land. This mitzvah tells us that if a non-Jewish slave ran away from his master who is in Chutz Laaretz, in a land that is outside of Eretz Yisrael, and the slave ran away from his master to Eretz Yisrael, it, we are not allowed to return him to his master who is outside of Eretz Yisrael. We are also not allowed to make him be a slave in Eretz Yisrael. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies only in Eretz Yisrael, and it applies at all times. If the Yiddish Eivir violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. The second mitzvah is Shaloi Lahaynes Evid Zehabe Reach Meadeinov, Michutz Alaaretz Laaretz Yisrael. Not to oppress a slave who escaped from his master outside of Eretz Yisrael to Eretz Yisrael. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, Imcha Yeshev Bekir Becha, Batoi Bloi Loi Teinenu. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not oppress a slave who ran away to Eretz Yisrael from his master who is in another land. This mitzvah tells us that if a non-Jewish slave ran away from his master who was outside of Eretz Yisrael and the slave ran away to Eretz Yisrael, then we are not allowed to oppress him, that means hurt him in any way through words. Meaning we're not allowed to tell him something which will embarrass him or hurt his feelings or in any other way which will hurt him. This mitzvah applies to all people. It applies in Eretz Yisrael, and it applies at all times. If Yiddis Eivir violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. Unit 220, page 102. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvahs based in Lodun bedin shemer china. The mitzvah for based in to judge the case of an unpaid guardian. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, 
is in the words in the Pasuk, Ki yitain ishal al ehu kesef eichelim lishmer. The synopsis of this mitzvah is judge the case of the unpaid guardian when a dispute arises between the guardian and the owner of the item according to the laws of the Torah. This mitzvah is telling us about a Shem Rechina. A Shem Rechina means an unpaid watchman. What does this mean? In a situation where a Yid asks another Yid to guard his item for him, for example, Ruvain has a watch, and he is going away somewhere, and this watch is very expensive, and he doesn't want to take it with him. So he asks his friend Shimon to do him a favor and watch the, the watch for him until Reuven comes back and asks for the watch to be returned. Shimon is called a shamer, a watchman. And in this case, Reuven asks Shimon to watch it for him for free, meaning that he's going to watch it without getting any money, not being paid any money for his watching. This is called a shamer china. A shamer, a watchman who is chinam, he is not getting any money for the job of watching the item. Now, what happens if after Reuven came back, Shimon tells him, I'm sorry, but your watch got lost, or your watch got stolen, or your watch broke. I don't have the watch to give it to you. So now Ruvain wants his watch back and Shimon is telling him that for whatever reason he can't give him back the watch or the watch is ruined. So now Ruvain and Shimon both go to Bastin and Bastin has to judge who is right. Does Shimon have to pay Ruvain the value of the watch or not? This mitzvah tells us that Bastin is obligated to judge the case of the Shem Rechinam, to judge this case between Ruvain and Shimon according to the halachas that the Torah tells us, apply to a Shem Rechina. This mitzvah applies only to Bastin, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Page 103. This page has two mitzvahs, and they are both mitzvahs asay. The first mitzvah is mitzvahs Bastin ladun bedin neise sachar v'seichen. The mitzvah for Beisdin to judge the case of the paid guardian and the renter. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, The synopsis of this mitzvah is judge the case of the paid guardian or renter when a dispute arises between him and the owner of the item according to the laws of the Torah. This mitzvah is telling us about a shamer sachar, a paid watchman, or a seicher, a renter. A shamer sachar is a watchman who is watching an item for another yid, and he is being paid for the job of watching the item. A seicher, a renter, is someone who is renting an object from another yid, meaning he is paying money to the other yid to allow him to use his item. Now sometimes there could be disagreements that happen between the owner of the item and the paid watchman, the Shemr Sachar, or between the owner of the item and the Seicher, the renter. In those cases, they would come to Bezdin, and Bezdin has to judge who is correct, who is right. This mitzvah tells us that Bezdin is obligated to judge the dispute, to judge the disagreement between the owner of the item and the Shemr Chinam, or the owner of the item and the Seicher. They have to judge these cases according to the halachas that the Torah says apply in these specific situations. This mitzvah applies only to Bastin. It applies in all places and it applies at all times. The second mitzvah is mitzvah's Bastin Ladun Bedin Hashoyel, the mitzvah for Bastin to judge the case of the borrower. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, Vichi Yishal Ish Me Imre Ehu. The synopsis of this mitzvah is judge the case of the borrower when a dispute arises between him and the lender according to the laws of the Torah. This mitzvah is telling us about a shayel. A shayel is someone who borrows an item from another yid. Sometimes there could be a disagreement between the borrower and the one who lent him the item, and they will come to Bezdin, and Bezdin has to judge who is right. This mitzvah tells us that Bezdin is obligated to judge the disagreement, to judge the case between the owner of the item and the shayel, according to the halachas that the Torah says apply to the case of a shayel. This mitzvah applies only to Bastin. It applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Unit 221, page 112. 
This page has two mitzvahs. The first mitzvah is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah sinasinas sechar sacher b'yoymai. The mitzvah to pay a hired worker's wages on time. The makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk b'yoymai sitein sacharay. The synopsis of this mitzvah is pay your hired workers on time. This mitzvah tells us that if we hire someone to do a job for us, we're obligated to pay that person on time. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. The second mitzvah is shaloyna acher sechar socher, not the laying wages of a worker. The mokher, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk, leisolin pula socher itcha ad boiker. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not delay paying the wages of your hired worker. This mitzvah tells us that if we hire someone to do a job for us, we are not allowed to push off paying this person on time. We're not allowed to hold back the money past the time that this person is supposed to be paid. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yiddish Eiver violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. Unit 222, page 120. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is Allow a worker to eat from his labor. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, The synopsis of this mitzvah is allow your employee who is working with produce to eat from the produce while on the job. This mitzvah tells us that if we hire a yid to do work with our produce, that means things that grow from the ground or from trees, we are obligated to allow the yid to eat from the produce during the time of this job. There are different halachas about exactly when the yid is allowed to eat the produce, how much the yid is allowed to eat, etc. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Page 121. This page has two mitzvahs, and they are both mitzvah shloisase. The first mitzvah, by number 523 on the page, is yeser al Do not put away produce in order to eat it later. The mukher, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk. You can find the words in the Pasuk in the book on top of the Hebrew and English name of 523, by the number 523 in the Pasuk. The words are, Vel kel This mitzvah tells us that even though a hired worker is allowed to eat from the produce during the time that he is hired to work, nevertheless, he is not allowed to take from the produce more than he is going to eat right now and keep it for later, or take from the produce and give it away to other people. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yiddish Eiver violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. The second mitzvah, by number 524, is Shaloi Yechal Hasacher Do not pause to eat while actually working. The Makar, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk. Again, you can find the words of the Pasuk in the book on top of the Hebrew and English name of 523. And the words for this mitzvah are by the number 524 in the Pasuk. The words are Vecharmesh Leisanif al Kamas Reyecha. This mitzvah tells us that a hired worker who is hired to do work with produce that is still connected to the ground is not allowed to eat from that produce while he is actually doing the work that he was hired to do. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yid was Aver violates this mitzvah, he is punished with Malkus. Unit 223. Page 128. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah sloisase. This mitzvah is shaloi lachsen behema vishas melacha, not to muzzle an animal at the time of work. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk, loisachsem sher bedishoi. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not stop an animal from eating while it is working with produce. This mitzvah tells us that when a yid is using an animal to work with produce, for example, the animal is carrying a bag of wheat on its back, 
the yid is not allowed to stop the animal from eating from the produce that it is working with. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a yid is over violates this mitzvah, he is punished with malchus. Unit 224, page 136. This page has one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah halva le'ani, lending money to a person in need. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk, im kesef talves ami es ha'ani imach. The synopsis of this mitzvah is lend money to a fellow Jew. This mitzvah tells us that if a yid is struggling financially, we are obligated to lend him money to help prevent him from coming to a point where he is so desperate that he must embarrass himself by asking for tzedakah. We are obligated to lend him as much money as we are able to afford. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Page 137. This page has two mitzvahs. The first mitzvah is a mitzvah sloisase. This mitzvah is shaloi nisbah choyiv me'oni she'ein loi b'mali froya. Not to demand repayment of a debt from one who is unable to pay. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk loisihi aloi kinoisha. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not pressure someone to repay a debt when you know that he does not have the means to pay. This mitzvah tells us that if we lent money to someone and we know that that person does not have the money to pay us back, we are not allowed to ask him for the money when we know that he doesn't have the money to pay us back. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If the Yid was over, violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. The second mitzvah is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is lingois es hanachri, demanding repayment from a non-Jew. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is es hanachri tigois. The synopsis of this mitzvah is one may press a non-Jew for repayment of a debt on time. This mitzvah tells us that if a yid lent money to a non-Jew, he is obligated to ask the, the goy and demand from the goy to pay back the debt that he owes him. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. Unit 225. In this unit, we're going to learn about a mashkin. A mashkin, which in English is translated as collateral, is when one person owes another person money. For example, Ruvain owes $100 to Shimon. And Shimon, the person who's owed the money, wants to be secure that Ruvain is going to pay him back the money that he owes. In this case, the $100 that Ruvain owes Shimon. So Shimon asks Reuven to give him an item, something that he owns, and this Shimon will hold on to until Reuven pays back the debt. And if Reuven doesn't pay back the debt, Shimon will be allowed to sell the item and use the money that he gets from the sale as payment for the debt. Page 146. On this page there is one mitzvah, and it is a mitzvah sloi This mitzvah is shaloi lemashkin baal chayv bizreya not to take collateral by force. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not forcibly take an object of value as collateral from a borrower. This mitzvah tells us that if someone lent money to another yid, and after he lent the money, he now wants to come to this person and take from him a mashkin, he is not allowed to force that person to give him a mashkin. Rather, he has to go to Beistin, and Beistin will send a shliach, will send a messenger from Beistin, who stands outside the borrower's home and waits for the borrower to bring out an item to be used as a mashkin. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a Yiddis Aver violates this mitzvah, he is punished with malchus. Page 147. This page has two mitzvahs. The first mitzvah is a mitzvah saseh. This mitzvah is mitzvah sashavas mashkin livalov be'es shehut tzarich the mitzvah of returning the collateral to its owner when he needs it. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the pasuk, hashev tashiv loyes ha'avayt kevoy hashemesh. The synopsis of this mitzvah is return the collateral to the borrower when he needs it. This mitzvah tells us 
that when a lender took a mashkin from a borrower, he is obligated to return the mashkin to the borrower at the times when the borrower needs it. For example, if the lender took a blanket as a mashkin, then when it comes to nighttime and the borrower needs the blanket to sleep with, the lender has to give the blanket back to the borrower for the nighttime, and he can only take it as a mashkin again in the morning when it's daytime. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. The second mitzvah is a mitzvah sloisase. This mitzvah is shaloyelim noya avait mi ba'olav ve'es shetzarich loy. Not to withhold the collateral from its owner when he needs it. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, Leisishkav Ba'avoytoi. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not hold back collateral from a borrower when he needs it. This mitzvah tells us that we are not allowed to hold back the mashkin, the collateral, at the time when the borrower needs it. For example, if the lender took a blanket from the borrower as a mashkin, and it comes at night time and the borrower needs the blanket to sleep with, the lender is not allowed to hold back from giving the blanket to the borrower. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a yid was aver violates this mitzvah, he receives no punishment. Page 148. This page has two mitzvahs, and they are both mitzvahs loisase. The first mitzvah is shaloy lemashkein almana, not to take collateral from a widow. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, the loy sachavel beged almana. The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not take collateral from a widow. This mitzvah tells us that if a yid lends money to a widow, a widow is a woman whose husband passed away, chas v'shalom. If a yid lends money to her, he is not allowed to take a mashkin from her. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a yid is aver violates this mitzvah, he is punished with malkos. The second mitzvah not to take as collateral things that are used for preparing food. The mocker, the source of this mitzvah, is from the words in the Pasuk, The synopsis of this mitzvah is do not take as collateral anything that is used to prepare food. This mitzvah tells us that the lender is not allowed to take as a mashkar from the borrower any utensil that is used for preparing food. For example, he is not allowed to take a pot which is used for cooking food. This mitzvah applies to all people, it applies in all places, and it applies at all times. If a yid was aver violates this mitzvah, he is punished with malkos.